Today, I'm going to show you a data sufficiency example where the GMAT tries to get tricky. It tries to fool you, but don't worry. I'm going to show you exactly how it works, exactly how to spot the trap so you won't get fooled. Also, just for being here today, I have a free gift for you. Three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the same strategies I teach all of my private students. They work really well. They're going to help you a lot and it's free. You can download it right in the description. Okay, let's get on to that example. During the offseason, a hockey team acquires Killer Carlson and two brothers, Jack Hansen and Steve Hansen, for $16.25 million. How much did the team pay for Steve Hansen? Always, always, always pick out what you've been asked for and write it down. We are trying to find the value of S. Step two, pick out any equations we are given in the question. In this case, we are told that K plus J plus S equals 16.25. Okay, whenever you're being asked for a value and you're given equations, you want to count the number of equations you're given and the number of variables you've been given. In this case, we've been given one equation and we've got three variables, K, J, and S. And the strategy is we need an equation for each variable. So we have three variables, so we need a total of three equations. Hey, we've already been given one equation in the question. We are looking around for two more equations. Let's see if we get it. Number one, the total the team spent on both brothers together was five eighths the amount it spent on Killer Carlson. We always translate things out of English and into math. And in math, that means this, J plus S equals five eighths K. We needed two more equations. We didn't get it. We only got one more equation. So that is insufficient. Number two, the amount the team spent on Steve was one third the amount it spent on Jack Hansen and Killer Carlson together. So that in math means S equals one third J plus K. We needed two equations. Did we get two equations? We did not. We only got one equation, so that is insufficient. But hold on for just a second. Let's do some quick algebra here. And that turns into 3s equals j plus k. We don't need j plus k anymore. The equation k plus j plus s equals 16.25, we can substitute in and get 3s plus s equals 16.25, 4s equals 16.25. We can obviously solve for s. And I know what you're thinking. I knew, I knew that this business about counting on equations and counting unknowns was really iffy, that it wasn't going to work and I was going to get burned by it. Two things are super important. First of all, yes, they played a trick on you here. They they rarely do it, literally less than 10% of the time, so don't get too paranoid. Number two, it's easy to spot this particular trick. Here's what I want you to look out for. Whenever they add three things together, I want a little flag to drop in your head that they might be playing a trick on you. And the next thing that's super important, if they give you the variable that you're looking for, in this case, S, in terms of the other two variables, J plus K, that is the other like mark that they're probably playing a trick on you. Go ahead and do the algebra and see if it will work out. In this case, we're told S equals one third J plus K. So we're given S in terms of the other two variables. If those two things happen, just take the time to do the algebra. But I want to absolutely stress, don't get paranoid. They really don't do it that often. I just want you guys to be aware of how they frequently set it up. If they do play tricks, usually counting equations and counting unknowns will lead you to the right answer very quickly. And by usually, I mean like over 90% of the time. Okay, good job, guys. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, boy, that was tricky. Are they going to do that to me a lot? The answer is no, hardly ever, maybe 10% of the time. So I don't want you to get paranoid about it. Almost always in a data sufficiency question, if you're asked for a specific value, you can almost always add up the number of equations you're given, add up the number of variables you're, you're given, and a statement will be sufficient if you have the same number of equations as you have variables. If they're going to play a trick on you, I want you to look out for a couple things. Heads up, if they give you three things added together, just like we had in this example, we had S plus K plus J equals 16.25. Little red flag should drop in your head. Hmm, are they playing a trick? And then the other thing I want you to look for, are they giving you the variable that you're looking for in terms of the other variables? In other words, in this case, we were asked for the variable S and we were given S equals one third K plus J. So we were given S in terms of the other two variables. When they do that, 
the statement is almost always sufficient. So again, don't get too paranoid about it, but I did want to give you these red flags heads up because there's no reason why you can't catch this trick if they try to do it to you on the test. Okay, great job. So great job, that's how it works. If you found this video helpful, please remember to hit either subscribe or like, it helps us out a lot. And also don't forget about your free gift, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. Okay, great work and we'll see you next time.